Hello again and welcome. During the last video I showed how I had modified this UT61E to reduce its burden voltage in the milliamp and microamp ranges. And if you go back and watch that video you'd see that I wasn't able to make any real good improvements in the 22 milliamp range or the 220 milliamp range. Again we ended up in the 22 milliamp range with about 234 millivolts of burden voltage. And originally we had started out with 240.2. In the 220 milliamp range we ended up with about 807 millivolts. And the meter originally was about 1.265 volts. So there was a slight improvement in the 220 milliamp range. And that was due to changing out some 4007 diodes for some shock keys. So the way I had modified that meter is I had removed the two upper shunts. So I ended up with basically a 1 ohm in series with a 9 ohm. And then I added two amplifier stages. And then I cut some of the traces in the circuit board to reuse some of the switch contacts. So I was looking at the schematic one last time to see what it would take to improve the 22 and the 220 milliamp ranges. So this is what I came up with. So I could use that FC3 to drive an N-channel FET which would then turn on a couple of back-to-back P-channel FETs and I could remove essentially the voltage drop of this 9 ohm resistor. Then what I could do is use the 1 ohm shunt for both milliamp ranges and I would add another gain stage for that. The problem with this is really there just isn't enough room to even go in and add one more amplifier. So if you were wanting to improve the burden voltage of a meter probably the best thing you could do is do it with an external amplifier and a shunt. Again, David E. V. Blog offers something called the Microcurrent Gold. I think he charges about $100 for that unit. And to be honest, I haven't spent a whole lot of time looking at what he's got, but I assume it's just a couple of different shunts, or maybe a shunt, and a few different amplifier stages that he just selects. And if you've watched any of my recent videos, I've made up a couple of different amplifier and shunt circuits that I've built up on a proto board. So what I've done now is I've actually made one into a little case here that's just made out of circuit board material. And again, I believe this probably works similar to how Dave's would work. Uh, there's only so many ways you're going to skin this cat. This is basically the circuitry for it. So the inputs are on the left. These are my two banana jacks. You can see it goes straight into a fuse. And then I have two back-to-back -back diodes. And these act as a clamp so the voltage across these shunts can never exceed 0.7 volts. To the right of this you can see I have three different shunts. These consist of a 0 0.01 ohm, a 10 ohm, and a 10k ohm resistor. So to the right of the shunts you can see I have two double pull double throw switches. And two of these are used to select the nano and the microamp ranges. And the other one is to select the milliamp or the microamp ranges. And off to the right of that, you can see I have two different gain stages, both at 10x, and again, I'm just using the LTC 1051. And then at the top, I have my 9-volt transistor battery, and I divide that by two with a couple of resistors, and I use that to drive my center point. So what's going on with the switches here? If I'm trying to read across the 10K ohm shunt for the nanoamp range, I'm going to short out the 10 ohm shunt. If I'm trying to read across the 10 ohm, then I'll short out the 10k ohm shunt. And then on the back side for the milliamp range, I'll basically short out the 10 ohm and the 10k. And then I'll just sense off the high side of my 0.01 ohm shunt. So again, just some basic switching logic done with mechanical switches. But it should work fine. Unfortunately, I've built all this with 1% parts. So the accuracy on this isn't going to be real good. But it should give you an idea how capable a circuit like this would be without spending a whole lot of money. So again, in the milliamp range, if I supply one amp of current and I've got a 0.01 ohm shunt, the shunt's drop is going to be 10 millivolts. So I'll gain that up and the output of this is going to be 1 volt. So 1 amp is 1 volt. Alright, so I hardly got started and the batteries in the TPI meter just died. So hopefully everything now is set to go. So basically I have my fluke calibrator that's tied in series with this resistive decade box and that's in series with the Bryman BM869S and also our little amplifier circuit. 
So currently the output of the amplifier is tied into our UT181A. So we can see the Bryman is reading 200.02 microamps and our UNIT181 is reading 201 microamps. And the voltage drop across this is currently 2.018 millivolts. Let's try increasing the amount of current. This is with all the resistors deselected, so essentially it's a dead short right now. And the Bryman is reading 989 microamps, and we're reading 988 roughly on the Unity 181. So currently this is dropping roughly 10 millivolts, which is exactly what we had calculated. There is a fuse again in series with this, but it's not really going to come into play. We're currently using this uh, 10 ohm shunt. Let's try reducing the current. So again, our fluke reference is set for one volt right now. What I'm going to do is put a four mega ohm resistor in series with this, and this is going to give us roughly 250 nanoamps. And we can see we're reading 260 with the Bryman right now. What we can do is throw this into the nanoamp range instead of being 250, 260 nanoamps, it's reading about 190. And you notice that the voltage across the shunt is correct. So the problem here isn't actually this box, it's the loading of this TPI-194 across it. So if I remove the input to this, look at this, 250.01. Again, we reattach the meter and it loads it right down. What we could do is actually change this meter over to the voltage input and that'll increase its input impedance and now you can see it's having much less of an effect. Like basically no effect. So with 250 nanoamps applied you can see the voltage drop is roughly 2.5 millivolts now. Let's try reducing this even further. So this is with 10 mega ohms now in series. So we are applying roughly 100 nanoamps. And we can see it's reading 101.4. Inside of my little test box, I also have a 100 and a 1 giga ohm resistor. So with the 100 mega ohm attached, this would be roughly 10 nanoamps. And you can see the UT181 is reading roughly 12 nanoamps. Let's just try it with our 1 giga ohm. This would be 1 nanoamp. And you can see the UT181 is reading roughly 3 nanoamps. And if we open circuit it, you can see we are reading roughly 2 nanoamps. So to read down this low, we'd really probably want to trim the offset voltage on this amplifier or just add another shunt and go ahead and run that through the gain stage again. But you can see it's definitely one nanoamp difference between the two. So fairly accurate, again made out of 1% parts, so it's not going to be super precision. But probably for most home projects, something like this would be more than adequate. So again, this box can read into the milliamps. So let's just go ahead and we'll hook up a regular power supply to this. I've gone ahead and shorted out my resistor box 
and you can see I'm applying a 100 milliamp signal. So what I'll do is I'll select our box for the milliamp range. And you can see we are now reading roughly 101.5 milliamps. So again, fairly accurate. But notice our burden voltage is roughly 8 millivolts. What we can do, we'll just uh, remove our Bryman meter. And what I'll do is I'll increase our current. So this is roughly 600 milliamps right now, and you can see we are now dropping about 50 millivolts. This is with roughly one and a half amps being applied, and you can see we are now dropping 123 millivolts. What I've done is I've just selected our amps jack for the Bryman and you can see we are reading 1.06 amps and you can see our little amplifier is reading 1.05 amps. Currently we are dropping roughly 75 millivolts across it. Of course when we calculated this we were saying for a 1 amp we were going to drop 10 millivolts across our shunt. And you can see we're actually dropping 75.3 millivolts across the amplifier. But again, we've got this fuse which is in series with this, which is dropping a fair amount of voltage. So if I were to take this resistor, for example, and short out our fuse, here we go, roughly 35 millivolts. So a fair amount of drop just because of our fuse. This is one of the fuses out of one of the meters that I damaged. Of course, we could put a much larger fuse in here, like a 10 amp or something, and we would drop this burden voltage down quite a bit. But I think at least to protect the circuit, we're probably better off with just keeping that 1 amp in there. But again, if you're making an amplified chunt circuit like this, you're probably interested in reading in the milliamps and lower ranges, not up in the amp ranges. So I've gone ahead and hooked this up to my other bench power supply, and you can see I'm putting out roughly 5 amps right now. Our UT181 is only reading 4 amps, and that's basically because I've got this 9 volt battery in here, and I'm splitting the voltage of this, so I can go plus or minus basically 4.5 volts. I'm sure this battery isn't in the best of conditions, and the amplifier I'm using isn't going to be able to drive to the rail. So we are outside of the operating range of what this amplifier can even read. I'm surprised that my fuse is actually surviving this. Actually, that fuse is very hot right now. So here I'm applying roughly one and a half amps. And you can see we're back into the operating range of our op amp. So again, if you're interested in reducing the burden voltage of your particular meter, you could take it to the extremes like I did with the UT61E and modify it. Or probably better, you could make an amplified shunt like what I'm showing here. Again, I don't have anything very expensive inside of this box. And again, not very complex. A few resistors, an op amp, maybe some resistors for some shunts and some switches and a battery, and you're pretty much good to go. Well, I think that's going to be it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. Later.